Okay, I think we are good. Uh, so hey, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Benjamin Ita, uh, working at HVX on the on the development side. Uh, here I have with me uh, Draman, uh, our head of product. So for the one who are uh, regular joiner of our online series, uh, you know it's always the, the same people uh, that you see. So we are very pleased to to see you back. Uh, we will continue to do these uh, these monthly uh, webinars, um, and you know each month we will. Uh, We'll choose a topic that we think uh, makes sense. And for today, you know, we thought that with what's going on in Bitcoin is maybe now, uh, we think that now is the time to talk about what is beyond Bitcoin and how investors can capture, you know, um, performance within the crypto assets uh, universe. So the, the plan is to talk about, um, you know, beyond Bitcoin, uh, what are the different segments uh, within crypto? Um, then we will talk uh, about the, um, the dynamic of performance of Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus altcoin in order you know, to present that our belief that uh, uh, market-weighted evolutive uh, index uh, for strategic allocation is what investors should consider rather than picking a uh, uh, single crypto. And then we will go to something that is more tactical, uh, our momentum strategy in order uh, for investors to capture a you know, pot potential bull run on the, on the altcoin side. Uh, and lastly, we will introduce you to our um, uh, online simulator tool for asset allocation analysis. So before uh, starting, I will just read this, uh, uh, this, web this disclaimer. Um, so this webinar and its, correspondent its corresponding presentation are for information informational purposes only. This presentation is not an offer to buy or sell, nor it's a solicitation of an offer to buy or sell. So that being said, I will, I will give the mic to, uh, uh, to Draman to, uh, to go uh, uh, in depth about uh, uh, the topics I just mentioned. Okay, cool. No, thank you so much, Ben. And hi, everyone. And good to see you back, you know, seeing some, some of you guys back in, in, in anyway. So we wanted to talk about, you know, what is, I think Ben is the one who says it the most, right? Crypto is not Bitcoin. And I really like how he says it because that's one of the things that we always go back to with our client, which is, you know, we believe that the crypto universe is more than Bitcoin. And it's one of the best time to say it is probably now because Bitcoin has done so well that it's, um, it, it, it's pretty clear to us based on our, our experience of the crypto market that this is a good time to diversify into other other crypto token as well. And that is not to detract from the performance of Bitcoin. So if you look at over the past 13, almost 14 months, Bitcoin has done super well. It's up 160%. But, you know, hindsight is 2020. So everybody looks back and it's like, oh, 160%. But the question that you know I ask myself is how many people would have been able to capture that 160 percent? Because to do so, you should have invested in January 2023. But remember, in January 2023, that was you know less than two months after FTX. So very few people were aggressively investing in Bitcoin in January 2023. Or you should have done that at the time of the banking crisis in the U.S. when a lot of many regional banks failed. How many people were buying Bitcoin then? Oh, you should have done that when BlackRock filed for the ETF. And by the way, even if you've done that then, which was probably the easiest signal to trade from, two months later, the market was back at the level before the filing because people were still not convinced that the SEC was we're going to approve it. So it was really after that that the market started pricing that the approval would happen. And that's when we got the last bull run essentially and that's all of this is to say that you know even if you see 160 percent performance over the past 14 months very few people would have been able to capture it because that would also that would have meant to perfectly time the market which very few people can do or to have you know the insight to invest when the market was trading down and that that is to say that bitcoin has a fantastic year last year but Nonetheless, timing or capturing that performance will not have been the easiest thing to do. And many investors missed on it. That's, that's a good side way to one of the core beliefs that we also had, which is a, a patient always on dollar cost averaging sort of strategy that helps you buy crypto market repeatedly instead of trying to time the market. Because 
that would have been the best way to capture the upside of Bitcoin last year would have been to just allocate every month, every three months, or, or just take the decision to allocate once a significant event happened and just stick with it instead of trying to time the market. So that's the, the first thing that, 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 that's the first point that I wanted to make. And the second point is, obviously Bitcoin did better than, you know, the total market excluding Bitcoin and stablecoin, which just went up 120%, 114%, which is, you know, it's lower than Bitcoin, but if you compare it to NASDAQ, S&P 500, gold, all the other traditional asset classes, this is order of magnitude, magnitude higher. So the, the scope of performance that you have from crypto is just in another league compared to other assets. So Bitcoin or altcoin will still have been a fantastic addition to any investor portfolio. But what I also find very interesting is, as much as we know that Bitcoin did super well, if you look at what happened over the past four to five months, actually, the altcoins, the, the, the market excluding Bitcoin, did better than Bitcoin because it went up almost 100% while Bitcoin went up from 60 to slightly less than that. So over the past four months or so, as much as Bitcoin had like a fantastic one year or so, the market has already been shifting to altcoin because the altcoin have done better than Bitcoin already. And that's the very interesting data point based on our analysis of the market. We think that as we move along, more and more of the performance will come from the altcoin. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin will not perform more. We think that it's still going to be a lot of strong performance for Bitcoin, largely driven by the spot ETF in the US impact. But even then, the altcoin are likely to perform even better than, than Bitcoin. That, that's that one of the first things that we wanted to touch on. And because, because of that, we think a lot of the upside, a lot of the upside is going to come from tokens that are not Bitcoin. And that makes a lot of sense because crypto is still, is still early. For some of the folks that have been with us on this call for the past few months, you've seen this graph. And there's a reason why we like it, because it just shows you how early we are in the Web3 journey. We are basically, you know, roughly around, you know, 1999 and 2000, if we were to make the parallel with internet. And back then, most of the flagship internet companies were just getting started. Like, you know, Google was started just a year or so ago, PayPal as well, Alibaba was just getting started. And, and the, the only maybe two com internet company of consequence then were maybe Yahoo and eBay. But even then, no one was appreciating the whole impact that all these companies will have. And that's how crypto fails today. As much as, you know, how do we, what do we know about crypto today largely? It's Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's like basically Yahoo and eBay. But, 20 years down the line, how many internet-based companies do we know that are not Yahoo and eBay? I would argue that most of the internet companies that we know today are essentially not Yahoo and eBay. So the value that will come to crypto and to blockchain as an investment will actually, is yet to be built or is yet to be created, essentially. So now is it's so early and now is one of the best times to be allocating to the, to the asset class. We see it in terms of the number of in crypto users, which is below 1 billion today. And we also see it if you look at the crypto market cap, which is just shy of 2 trillion, and you compare it to other, to the value that is locked in other assets, you know, being collectible, the three collectible alone are three times the size of crypto. But we know that a lot of people think about crypto as collectible when it's come to NFTs or when it's come to R. If you compare crypto to gold, you know, gold is seven times the, the size of the crypto market overall. And if you compare it to equity or to bond, it's like almost 100 times that these traditional asset classes are bigger compared to crypto. And we think over time, crypto will capture part of the use cases of all of this. So its total addressable market could be in the hundreds of trillions. So even from today, you still have like 50x 100x upside that is left in crypto as a universe. So that's probably the best way, one of the best ways to think about the potential that you can get 
it's so early that I can still have outsized return. And even, even more so because we're seeing more and more use cases of crypto. The people that don't know the asset class very well, when we talk about crypto, they always think about Bitcoin at best. A lot of them will say it's just speculation, but actually, you know, it goes so much beyond that because over the past two, three years, we've seen so many interesting use cases. When it comes to social media and gaming, a lot of crypto protocols are changing the way you think about social media and gaming because they are enabling people to buy assets digitally and to trade them, which is one of the things that would unlock a lot of value creation in gaming. Or when you think about tokenization, which is, you know, how do we how do we use the crypto, the blockchain layer as the core infrastructure that powers payment, that powers fund management, and that powers, you know, post-trade settlement and stuff like that. And you have so many financial services, including UBS, that are doing pilot and proof of concept using crypto to do certain things. And you also have the use cases that have to do with ticketing and loyalty program so there's so many use cases of crypto that goes beyond you know bitcoin or ethereum or that goes beyond just the currency or the store of value use cases that are emerging but again similar to internet it was like google in 2000 had its engine but the engine was not as good as google today the engine did not have you know AI or the engine did not have all the application that make Google so great today. But you're already seeing all this signal that can give you an early sense of there's so much more to crypto than just the currency or the you using it to make payment and stuff like that. And that's what we see. We see that crypto use cases have the potential to improve many of the traditional services that we have. Everybody knows about the payment and the finance related use cases. Why do people use Bitcoin? It's because Bitcoin is faster and sometimes even cheaper than many of the traditional payment rails that we have, being Swift or PayPal. Why do people use stablecoin? It's because stablecoin is also faster and cheaper than using PayPal or Swift, right? Or why do people use all these, many of the decentralized finance application? Uniswap is a different way of market making, which is which actually provides more value to the ecosystem than any other exchange. And we think that in the long run, why do we believe that Uniswap or Aave will be bigger players? Because they are just providing the, the service, they are providing access to lending, they are providing access to liquidity in a way that is better for everybody in the ecosystem. So it's a solution that is significantly better than the existing one. So in the long run, we know that some of these applications will win over the existing one. And it's also true for data and data storage related services of a social media and streaming, where so many applications are just changing the way the content creator can get the value and also have a more direct relationship with, uh, with the users. So there's a lot to be said about all these use cases that are being created on, 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 on the blockchain. And the reason why that excites us is because we know this is what will create the next wave of adoption. And this is what will create more people using crypto. And as people use more and more crypto, they pay to use the, the blockchain. And because they pay for it, that creates revenue for the blockchain and that drives more and more adoption. So there's so much fundamental adoption that is happening in the blockchain that a lot of people don't don't see and that that is a strong backdrop for anybody trying to build an investment case for crypto because four or five years ago most of these did not exist but now they exist the work many of them makes millions of dollars of revenue so it's such a stronger case to invest in crypto now than it ever been in the past and that investment case would only keep on improving because you know crypto will over time eat more and more of the traditional services that are provided and uh, it's it's broadly for crypto but one of the cases that we like to talk about is ethereum which is you know the uh the largest and now uh, the most mature smart contract platform so the ambition of ethereum is to be you know 
the computer of the world like it's 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 one to be the computer on which you come and you build your internet application and although it's a it's an open source project they've done they've done fantastic work in keeping up to date with all the challenges they've been pushing a grade almost every year essentially to make sure that the platform is current and it's fit for purpose right and the last one that is coming in 2024 will aim to reduce the cost of using the cost for ethereum layer two layer two's rollups are our application a protocol that essentially help scale ethereum and it will be cheaper for this to run so this would make this will make the cost of running application on Ethereum even lower, which is great because one of the criticisms that we hear is Ethereum is it's expensive to run application on on Ethereum, for instance. But thanks to this upgrade, it will be cheaper to do so. So there's so many, and that's one of the ways you know in which you see that many of the pushback that blockchain we get against blockchain over time they are being fixed and that's why it's so similar to internet right because at the beginning of internet it was slow it wasn't fast enough it wasn't safe but over time all this problem was solved and it became easier and easier to use internet i think it's the same thing that we we'll see happening with uh with the blockchain as we go in the future more and more features will be built to sort of take care of people concerned right ben and people will be yeah. able to use them the same way as you know we come to use internet because internet today is so much better than internet that we grew up with right absolutely just 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 one thing that, that i'd like to add on, on this is the fact that uh you know all the the the, the etf issuer who who launched a, a bitcoin spot etf in in the us most of them are also applied for a spot ethereum etf as, as we did at hashdex so, so my point here is, you know, in December, we were saying to, to our investor on the back of our outlook that, you know, the ETF will come in Q1, uh, that, you know, it means a lot of new capital coming to the asset class. We, we start to see this. It's just the beginning. Uh, but there's the halving for Bitcoin coming in April. So, you know, these are clearly, you know, driver of performance uh, for, for this asset. But Ethereum, there are things that are, you know, ahead. So this should be, you know, kept in mind by, by investor. And this, again, to, to us, you know, reaffirm uh, the benefit of, of doing your index rather than picking your, your assets. But that being said, let's go to the to this very interesting section, uh, Roman. No, sure. I think, thanks, Ben. I think, yeah, that, that's a very, that's a, that's a very good point. I think, as, as, as we're saying earlier, even for Bitcoin alone, all the upside that we can expect from the ETF approval is not priced yet. And imagine that, also happening for ethereum when uh, the etf ethereum spot etf get approved in the us um here we wanted to you know as as we believe that crypto is so much in its infancy stage and over time a lot of the, the value will come for from newer project and newer protocols we think that indexing is the best way to allocate to crypto because that's the best way of capturing the upside from token and from projects that don't exist today, right? And one of the best a comparable that we can take is internet compared to like 24 years ago compared to now, right? And if you look at the top 10 constituent of the NASDAQ 100, then and now, you will see that only Microsoft survived in the top 10, right? So someone who was just going through the naive strategy of I'm just going to buy the top 10 in 1999 and stick with it throughout because you know they were great then they would always be great that person would have been in for a very painful experience because of course microsoft the only one that survived of the top 10 these were among the the 10 largest companies in the world but only one of them was still able to sort of capture to stay in the same league right so yeah if you'd invested in microsoft you would have at the end of it you would have been better for it right you would have even done better than the index. But remember, throughout the period, Microsoft lagged the index for the longest time because I think there was a period of time where people wouldn't, were not even sure that Microsoft would be able to survive and adjust to the new role, to the new world of you know mobile first or software first. So in a way, even the Microsoft that survived today is so much different from the Microsoft of 1999 that was you know, that was that was like software only, that was not doing hardware, right? But what is very interesting is out of the top, this top, this top 10, 
most of them did not exist or they were like so small back in the day, right? Apple was like a very different company. Amazon was very, was like a five-year-old company that has been listed for two years, right? NVIDIA was way smaller. Meta, Alphabet did not even exist then for, for, for the most part. So that's very interesting that it took less than 20 years for the world to be so different. And if we invested in Microsoft, we would have done super well. But imagine if you invested in the second company here, Cisco, you would have been down minus 6% over the past 20 years. If we invested in Ericsson, which was one of the largest and best you know, flagship technology and uh, network company back then, you would have been down almost 100%. So I think that's a little bit of the, that captures very well the range of outcomes that you can have when you try and pick winners based on what you know today, especially in such a disruptive space as you know technology or internet could be. And that's what happened to internet, to the NASDAQ 100 20 years ago. We think that's gonna happen at a faster pace in crypto because crypto is internet on, on steroid. So investing in the benchmark, such as NASDAQ 100, would have helped you capture 350% return, which is way better than most of the outcome that you would have had by picking single asset out of that top 10. So that's a key insight to keep as, as you think about the investment opportunity for crypto. And you know we see that playing already in crypto, right? If you compare crypto in 20, 2019 to now, Bitcoin, as much as it's still the number one token, the dominance of Bitcoin, Bitcoin used to be, you know, three quarter of the asset class. Now it's barely 60% of the asset class. So Bitcoin has come down. What is interesting is Ethereum has tripled its contribution to the whole crypto market. So if you miss an allocation, someone who was only investing in Bitcoin will not have done so well over the past few years, right? And this graph captures it very well. Over the, from 2022 now, so over the past three years or so, over the past four years or so, you would have made 16x your investment if you'd invested in Ethereum. Compared, that's like four times what you would have made in investing in Bitcoin. And you know, one of the ways you could have allocated to the broad crypto index would have been through NASDAQ crypto index, which is the index that we track in our flagship strategy, you would have made you know, better than allocation to Bitcoin because as much as Ethereum was a small part of the universe, a, a diversified index like ours would have captured that upside. So that tells the story of why indexing matters in crypto because even Bitcoin, that is a flagship asset, you will, you will always find newer and smaller token that will do better than Bitcoin. So the, the, the goal of the game is how do we... How do you find the best allocation to, to get that upside as and when it's come? Because back in the day, it wasn't obvious that Ethereum would be the winner because look at Ripple. Ripple was pretty big back then too. But over time, Ripple contribution has actually gone down while Solana did not even exist in 2019. And Solana has come to be one of the largest contributors to the, to the, to the index. So again, crypto is an emerging asset class. New token, no narrative, no thesis will always come in favor or go out of favor. And picking single asset, even if you're picking the biggest one, will not be the way to outperform. But picking a well-diversified exposure is the way to go here. And that's what the, the short history of the NASA Crypto Index shows you. And we think that would be the same as we move throughout the, the next phase of the market, right? Right now, we we think there's three phases basically in crypto. You have the bull market, the bear market. We have one year of bull market, one year of bear market where market you know loses 70 to 80 percent at time, and then you have two years of recovery phase. And the tokens that tend to do better are different depending on the phase of the market that we are in. And that's one of the most interesting insights that we got by looking at this historical analysis, right? So if we, if you take a bull market, for instance, you know, altcoin, which is everything excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, will do better than Ethereum and Bitcoin. And not only they do better, look at the order of magnitude, right? This is from 13x to 20x. 
for instance. So the order of, no, sorry, from 13 to 200X essentially. So the order of magnitude of performance is so wide. So in the bull market, you don't want to miss out on the outcome. You don't want to miss out on Ethereum because they do so much better than, than Bitcoin. In the bear market, Bitcoin will do better. That makes sense because Bitcoin is a larger asset. So even when you know people are afraid of the asset class, they still you still have money flowing into Bitcoin, or people sell the altcoin to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. But in the recovery market, at the beginning of the recovery market, Bitcoin does better than altcoin and Ethereum. But as the recovery market confirm and is uh, strengthened, Ethereum tend to be the better performer, right? So if our analysis, if history repeat itself, or if history rhyme as it usually does, this year, we are in the second year of the recovery phase, and Ethereum will tend to do better than Bitcoin and, and, uh, and altcoin. Not only will it do better, it will do better by an order of magnitude that is significant. So missing, missing out on allocation on Ethereum today, this year will detract investor performance. And from next year on, we are very likely to be in full steam bull market where most of the performance will come from altcoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin will not do as, as well. So that's a way for you know investors to sort of see that part of investing in crypto is really get into the right thesis at the right time. And what this analysis show is that like there's a way to get allocation from, you know, I mean, Bitcoin today, but over time, I'm actually diversifying into Ethereum and altcoin. And now is probably one of the best time to start, you know, allocating away from Bitcoin to a more diversified portfolio and better yet to Ethereum plus altcoin tilted portfolio. So now is the time to sort of to do that trade. And that's the sort of conversation that we're having with, with our clients, right? And just look at the performance over the last three months. I have to confirm that Bitcoin did well for sure, but almost all the other assets, except maybe four of them, except four of them, did better than Bitcoin. If you're looking at the, the top 10 or the top 15 assets, even Ethereum did better than Bitcoin. So the performance shifting to Ethereum and altcoin is already happening. And that is that is bound to continue over the past few months or so. So what you know, there's like a tactical way of playing this, this thesis, right? So I think there's like usually two ways you can play this thesis. Either you go into a broadly diversified index, like the NASA crypto index job that we have, that would allocate to Bitcoin, but also to Ethereum and all the other altcoins based on the market cap. And you'll be able to capture the performance of Ethereum this year and of the altcoin next year. That's one way to play it. The other way that we've, uh, we've seen clients play the thesis is to invest more heavily in altcoin. And one of the ways you do that is through a momentum strategy. What a momentum strategy does is it allocate to the, to the token, to the asset, which had the best performance over the last few months. So, and the mo momentum is one of the factor investing strategies that have been the most validated by academic studies. So we built this strategy over a year ago because we thought one of the best ways to express or to build a position in crypto would be, you know, just look at the crypto prices that have gone up over the past few years, over the past few months, build a portfolio based on that. But we also control for the risk because we added a risk parity layer to make sure that, you know, as much as you want to invest in the crypto token that have gone up, you don't want to be overexposed to too small of the token. And the strategy works very well because in the momentum strategy as it is based on the last rebalancing, you, you will only have 25% allocated to Ethereum and Bitcoin, which means that 75% of the index is allocated to altcoin, be it Tron, be it Solana, be it Polygon, or be it Avalanche. And these tokens are the ones that are, that are going to drive most of the performance over the next few months or so. So we think if you get to the point where you start seeing that the market is shifting to Ethereum and to altcoin, because the market believes that that's where a lot of the performance will come from in the next few months, how do you, one of the best ways of expressing that view is through a momentum strategy, because instead of choosing, you know, a fundamental strategy where you don't really know how to wait, 
how much of tron should i have how much of litecoin should i have you could just use a systematic approach that would just allocate to token that have had great performance over the past few months so it's systematic it's transparent and you can just buy it because it's an etp just buy eyes in and you have access to that diversified exposure and based on the based on the back test that we did for the past uh, four years you know hamo is a ticker for the asset momentum uh factor strategy and you know btc is bitcoin a momentum strategy would have outperformed bitcoin and you know the more we are in the bull market like we were in 2021 the more the performance advantage is is ridiculous like you know at some point it was bitcoin wood was up 500 percent and the momentum strategy was up you know 1500 percent and that is you can see the performance advantage at any point in in time so so much so that even now as much as the market has come down the momentum over the past three years over the past almost four years now a momentum strategy would have done 2x the performance of just investing in bitcoin so that, that's a very compelling strategy because it's it's systematic so you don't have to pick which asset or the weighting to the asset and it resists well even to downturn because it does so well during the bull market that even in the bear market and in the recovery phases the advantage the performance advantage is, is not lost right and that is that is one of the ways that we've seen client play this and you see it also in the you know we compare the performance over here right like you know over the past 12 months bitcoin has done better as we've seen before but if you start looking at six months three months you see that the momentum strategy does better or catches up to the performance of bitcoin and that really is one of the ways of expressing a view on 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 altcoin outperforming the market without you having to choose this the specific altcoin or how you might you might weigh them and this is a strategy that is available you know on all the exchanges where you find our product being six cetera Euronext, and uh, the ticker is is hamo or agx um, on on Cetra. So if you need any more information, check on the website or or call us. So then I think you know we will uh, quickly also run through the last part exactly. of the conversation, which is the simulator now. Yeah. So so you know we we we've been uh, doing a lot of bespoke analysis uh, for for clients that were giving us you know uh, you know the the allocation uh, of of their portfolio and the idea you know was to to show them you know over different periods you know how uh, crypto can impact uh, their portfolio in terms of diversification, et cetera. So, you know, now we developed it uh, online. So it's available on our website. You just click on the simulator on the bottom. So the first option is that you can use, uh, uh, you know, model portfolio, very classic, hein? Uh, defensive, balance, growth, or you can directly uh, go and, and do your own allocation within a very wide uh, set of, uh, of indices on equity markets, fixed income, commodities, uh, and alternatives. So, um, so maybe let's look at a balanced portfolio uh, over maybe the last three years um, and, and check like how uh, you know, a 3% allocation to crypto uh, would look like. Um, so the, the thing that is interesting is that you can also you know, do your bespoke you know time window but also bespoke uh, percentage of allocation so what is important to keep in mind here is that the crypto allocation is made through the nasdaq crypto index uh, so you know this is the market weighted uh, uh, um, uh, index we, uh, we we mentioned so the idea is really you know to add the crypto assets within a multi-asset portfolio uh, maybe Roman, if you want to uh, on this example comment the, um, the, the 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 statistics that 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 we show Sure, sure, man. thanks. Um, yeah, so as Ben said, you can customize the allocation to crypto as you want, but think, you know, 3% is a good number to do that, and it helps see the impact of, you know, even a small allocation to crypto anyways. So what, what you have is, um, and it's very interesting to compare the, um, the performance advantage. So this is a portfolio without crypto. This is a portfolio with a little bit of crypto, but just enough so that the volatility of the portfolio will stay the same right and this is a portfolio with uh, the allocation to crypto as we've said it's like three percent right okay three percent perfect so what you see is like the sharp ratio is like two times just having three percent allocation to crypto it's improved the sharp ratio on two x more than two x already which is which is significant 
The second thing that is super interesting is the impact on, on performance, right? And you, you can look at it, you know, many ways. One is this is a portfolio without crypto. And if you were just to allocate 0.1% to crypto, so like, like barely nothing, it still improved the performance of the, of the of the portfolio by six basis points, right? Six basis, six basis points. Like if you put it in, in perspective, this is still a 2% improvement in the performance for just a 0.1% allocation to crypto. So it's a ratio of one to 20 in terms of allocation to the impact on the portfolio. What is even more interesting is the impact of 3% allocation to crypto. So you move from 3.09% to 5.11%. So that's like 202 basis points higher, essentially, by just allocating 3% of the portfolio to crypto, you've improved the analyzed return by 60%, actually, from 3 to 5%. And the volatility is higher, but the increase in volatility is significantly lower than the increase in return. That's why the sharp ratio gets so much better. And there's also an increase in max drawdown, but Again, the increase in the mass drawdown is, is uh, not as significant as a performance advantage. So a small allocation to crypto, 2%, 3%, has the potential of improving the return of the portfolio. But like, you know, 60% as we've seen in this case, and that is from 2020 to 2024. So that includes the period where crypto prices went up, but they've also had like a serious correction, right? So this is one of the best ways of seeing that over a three to four year cycle that includes bull and bear and recovery market, a small allocation to crypto can have like fantastic um, advantages on, on the portfolio. And, you know, you can compare the historical return per different period over here. So if, you, if we're going all the way back to 2017, you know, the a 3% allocation to crypto, a portfolio with a 3% allocation to crypto would have done would have, would have generated 24.5% versus 14.3% without crypto. So again, a 3% allocation to crypto would have yielded a 100 basis point improvement in performance. So I think that's sort of the ratio that we like to talk to client about, which gives you a sense of the asymmetric nature of a crypto allocation. 3% allocation to crypto can yield, you know, a 60% improvement in, in analyzed return and a 2x improvement in, in the sharp ratio of the portfolio, Ben. So I'll, uh, I'll stop here. I don't know if you have right. any final comment before we open it up to you. No, questions. I think we are good. Uh, so far, I, have see, I see no questions. So if you have a specific question, now is the time to uh, to put it on the Q&A section on the bottom of the of the Zoom window. Uh, but apart that, you know, you will receive, uh, you know, the, the usual uh, invitation over the next weeks. Uh, likely we'll do that, you know, uh, the March session, end of month. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, we're here, uh, if you need, uh, any, any more information, uh, we will share the slides, uh, this week. So yeah, feel free to, to get back to us with, uh, with additional questions and all the things we showed you, you know, on, on our website. So feel free to, to go there on hashtags.com. Thank you, Thank you very for your much, time yeah. and thank you everyone Thank you, for joining us today. Have a good week, everyone. Goodbye. Yeah, bye-bye.